All right, hello, wine drinking people. We're back, and finally, some great wines to talk about here. Not that you know we don't get great wines all the time to talk about, but it seems like we went through a lot of average stuff to get to this in this segment of what I drank yesterday. And uh, well, we got a couple of pink wines to start the uh, tasting out. The Domaine Ot Domineers Rosé from the Côte de Provence, one of the most famous areas in the south of France for making Grenache-dominated. Um, Rosés. This wine's about 60-something percent. Grenache, Cinso, Syrah. This is the benchmark rosé producer down here. If you have a mega yacht, you've got Domaine Ot on it, but not the Domaine yours. The Cellar Claire Noir, they don't buy anything this cheap on a mega yacht. $18. But a nice little wine. Some rose petals, strawberry fruit, some nice light minerality shown to the bouquet. And uh, this winer was founded in 1912 by Alsatian engineer Marcel Ott. And uh, really nice light fruit on the palate here as well. Some mineral nuance and nice freshness showing on the finish. That rose petal at the very end. Very good stuff. All right, next up, Sasha Lachine from Bordeaux. Crazily, uh, uh, crazy good Cote de Provence rosé. Crazy good, well, just wildly successful, I should say. You know, these wines are very good. And uh, this was the Chateau de Chalons. He does do a wine called Whispering Angels, which has, uh, you know, gotten to be such a big production that it's, uh, well, the quality's gone down a little bit on that wine, but still a very nice product. But the Chateau d'Echelons, I think some of the best rosés coming out of the Côte de Provence at $33. Still not crazy expensive. Blend of Grenache, Cinceau, and Roll, which is Vermentino and Syrah. Some light raspberry and strawberry-like fruit. Hints of chalky mineral nuance here. Little hints of barnyard kind of note there, too. A little funkiness going on in there. We like that. Nice concentration on the tongue. A little nice tangy uh, acidity here. A ripe raspberry, red plum fruit, and that chalky kind of minerality showing on the finish. Excellent rosé. All right, now on to the Burgundy's Domain Favely, well, there's two different labels here. Joseph Favely, obviously the domain is all domain bottle fruit, as it would indicate. Joseph is where they purchase some of the fruit for this. And a slight musky note to this Montigny, a little green apple and lemon citrus fruits. Good amount of terroir showing through in this wine on the nose. And uh, Erwan Favely took over in 2006, brought in a fellow cellar master from Bouchard Perifis, and now they're making wines in a little more forward and seductive style. But this is typical for this 2009 vintage Anyways, uh, lemon and green apple fruit showing on the tongue, a good amount of that minerality, a little slight salty note showing on the finish. Very good entry-level burgundy at $21.75. The Perlini Morache, the most famous village wine in all of Burgundy. Well, other than Pouille Fousse, the most famous village wine to people that really know Burgundy. A classic Perlini nose here with a chalky lime kind of note, minerality, green apple and pear-like fruit, notes of toasty oak spice, vanilla, and creme caramel. Really well built for a vintage lot, village wine, and this is what you'll find at vintages like 2009 wines that have much better less definition between village premier crew and grand crew when you have a great vintage in burgundy great village wine you can mistake for premier crew premier crew for grand crew and what can you mistake grand crew for i guess uh, 2009 it's definitely a special vin vintage though as i mentioned this polini well built and uh really nice concentration good minerality showing through on the finished Pellini, to me, always needs a little bit more time. That lovely uh, acidity carrying the uh, freshness through. An excellent bottle of Pellini at $16. Not $16, $60. Wow, I'm starting to lose some steam here at the end. Sorry, folks. All right, the uh, Merceau. A little bit of matchstick coming through on this wine. Some flinty notes, a little brioche toast. Red delicious apple, pineapple fruits. Nice fat and fruity wine on the tongue, something you usually get from there. So a little bit of a wet rock minerality component, a hint of a, a butter nuance and toasty oak on the finish. Very good stuff at 55 bucks. And then we say George here, a hint of smoke and kind of fresh earth truffle brown spice to so that red cherry berry fruit. Nice amount of that spice and acidity showing on the finish. Keeping things fresh, but still, this 2009 vintage, all about its charming personality, all about its forward and seductive nature. Really drinkable wine. Excellent juice at $57. The Gevray Chambertin, one of the greatest village wines in Burgundy. Had this lovely smoky bacon fat kind of dried sausage note. A host of dark spices to complement that black cherry and raspberry fruit. Really nice complexity and concentration showing on the nose. A bit tart on the fruit on the palate. That black raspberry and a host of uh, dark spices and great length showing 
on the finish here. This wine just needs a little bit of time to come around, but it's got everything in proportion here. Very good stuff. And then the Shambo Moussini Village wine, my favorite of the bunch, a touch of cola to this wine, a little fresh floral nuance as well to that red cherry berry fruit, really pretty bouquet, really fine and elegant with nice... Uh, fine tannins, very silky on the tongue, and really nice freshness here at the finish. One of the things I love about Chambon Moussigny, it is a very pretty wine. Maybe some people think it's light, but not light in nuance and complexity. All right, very good stuff. Excellent juice. That's what I had to drink yesterday, folks. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.